I think the best environment for nurturing creativity is a place where you don't feel threatened. I know that sounds very harsh, but in too many places, um, it's hard for designers to come in and feel like people support them, right? People support them to make mistakes, right? You're not going to get design right the first time. No one does. I, I get it wrong many times because design, parts of it is very formulaic, but parts of it is very abstract, right? Theory is very understandable. Style is not, right? So in order for designers to really nurture, there's a part of it that's very artistic, that's very hard, right? And it doesn't just come easily. But the way that you land on a creative style is when you have time to just think and explore. And you can't do that when you feel threatened and when you feel that um, the creative director is always kind of looking at you like, uh, I need that, I need that. So what's really hard as a creative director and as a leader is making sure that you create an environment where the junior designers and animators know that it's okay to make mistakes, know that it's okay to explore a little bit. Um, and that comes from kind of my attitude. If I'm like, you know, all the time, then they're not going to feel that. But if I understand and if I give them that freedom and that autonomy to play a little bit, not only do they enjoy that, but when it comes time to really strap and really work hard, they'll do it for you, right? And you'll do it for them, right? So um, that's a really important thing that's easily overlooked, but um, that culture of, of trust and allowing people and designers to go through their process um, will not only allow for the best work, but allow for the best mentorship and trust between student and teacher or creative director and junior artist. Yeah. I think both are very important. I think for most people, I'm not going to say everybody, I think for most creatives it's important to experience both. When I was a freelancer, I had the freedom to learn from different types of projects and different types of pipelines and workflows and learn from different designers. That really helped me. But as a full-timer, I got to really understand leadership and the infrastructure of, a, of a, how a company is made and how to deal with clients a little bit more. So I needed to know both um, to understand both, right? Um, so with any student that I mentor or designer I mentor, I always tell that person, even if I'm leading or, the lead, or my own company, right? If I have someone good, I'll say like, stay with me forever and don't ever go full time or freelance. Um, but a part of me knows that you kind of need to, even if it's just full timing at different places, you need to understand how different places run, different places work. That's why another thing that we do is because we love our employees so much, um, we try to sometimes, not always, but, some, but most of the time we're like, go experience other places and then come work with us and never leave. You know? uh, but I think both full-time and freelance is very important yeah, for different reasons. The best advice ever given to me was when I was a junior designer working um, at this company where I had to do everything, all the designing and animating. And my creative director said this in passing, um, not, I think he said it not as like life saving advice, but more like I need you to work harder. He said, never stop making, just like every single day, he was keep making, 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 making. Um, and that is very profound because a lot of students nowadays, when they enter into motion design, or design, they have this bar. They have this quality that they're looking at, say, that's what I have to do. And that quality for that person that they're looking at took 20 years to 15 years to 10 years to get there. But as a junior designer, the reason you go into this school, this industry is because you saw that, which is great. But you got to understand that that takes you years to get, right? It's not for the weak hearted. It's not for the thin skin. You must love design and love motion design to deserve to be a part of it, right? That's why I, like, I love it and I, I respect it. So the best advice given to me is the only way you're gonna get there is not through an aha moment. You never have this one, you wake up one morning and then you're Spider-Man. That's not what happens. What happens is you just do a lot of crap work 
until the crap work becomes not so crappy and then becomes kind of okay and then it becomes great. But what's bittersweet about that is by the time you get to that level, your eye is already up here. And when you get there, it's up there, it's up there and that's beautiful. I think that's something that when I was a young designer, my mentality was keep making because I was told to keep making. I was like, okay, I'll just keep making. But that's something that once you become a director and you're like, oh, I'm good, I don't have to keep trying, that's when you stop. That's when poof, someone else is gonna get above you. Um, and that should piss you off, right? So um, keep making. I know it sounds simple, but even now I try to find ways for me. If I go on a stretch where all I'm doing is building PDFs and client decks, I make sure to get in 30 minutes earlier just so I can make like one cool effect in 3D or one nice type lockup that I saw um, just to keep making. Yeah.